while it's just about, well, it's two minutes into the 17th day of, uh, of, uh, October, not September, <laughs> 2021. This is the beginning uh, of our observation vlog uh, and uh, also a segment, the transitions segment uh, for our, our life as uh, Cyborg Alpha. Oh, how should I begin begin, begin off? Uh there's, I've been noticing I've been editing editing the road vlog. There's a number of audio issues uh, clouding the uh, the clarity of of what's being said uh, during the uh, uh, verbal essays. And uh, as I said the our, our life is cyborg alpha are the notes and uh, the verbal essays are is our our life on the road. Well, it's time to replace that. Uh, uh, and so we'll do a parallel bit. But we're still going. I'm still going to upload the remaining, uh, remaining, uh, our life on the road, the road vlogs, and uh, also begin the uh, observation vlogs at the same time, uh, just to get myself a little bit ahead, but also to um, clarify some of the issues, the audio issues that are occurring uh, in the road vlog. So uh, that's kind of where we are now. Uh, I did listen to Lionel, and the thing is, is that we are going to go into further into Lionel because he connects so well with history. Uh, this is the reason why I do this. So I'm going to leave this in here. We're going to go for a bit. I'll stop it, and uh, it will be the end of uh, what's in going to go into the road vlog uh, and into the Our Life as Cyborg Alpha, and the rest of it's going to be the uh, observation vlog. All right, it wasn't adjusting problems, so I had some, some technical issues, and uh, we're back again. So this is going to be uh, part of the observation vlog. Um, this is going to be the first for, the first little bit of it, anyways, the first part of it. Uh, I'll do a two ten minutes, two ten minutes, two ten minute segments thereabouts. And it has to do with uh, Lionel's uh, discussion today. And... We aren't doing the analysis of Lionel. We're not simply uh, a fan, fangirling. We're not doing the um, sort of the fan of Lionel. We're doing analysis. Analysis takes time. Uh, I was watching a uh, a doctor, one of the doctors who's been discredited from uh, from uh, globally in terms of. Uh, his views on COVID, the CBD. Now, I was listening with a group of people, none of whom were doctors. They brought up a lecture that he was giving to a group of doctors. I stood, I, I listened and I understood what he was doing was giving a lab report. And that's what it was. It was a lab report. It was, it was what should be done in terms of a lab report. So he's going through the detail how we got into the detail, what some of the methodologies were, uh, different things like that. This is what you would find in the ops, in, in a good lab report. <clears throat> Most of the people in the room, I, I would say, I, from what I, I questioned, uh, couldn't understand a word he was saying. They agreed with certain parts here and there and so on and so forth, but the actual details didn't get through. They couldn't understand the details. And one of the reasons why they couldn't understand the details had to do with the fact that they really didn't know the mechanisms by which COVID operates. And then the rest of why I call it CBD because the term COVID has been so polluted. Uh, there's almost no way of actually using it again properly and not having this sort of impact uh, where you have the negative uh, uh understandings of COVID really come in as a significant factor. So to avoid that, I've re-termed it uh, CVD. Uh, and it sounds, it sounds for coronavirus disease. Uh, and because there's a difference between disease and disorder. A disorder is something that is genetic, that you're born with. It's hereditary. And disease is something that infects you. It comes into your system. But what, what, what I began to realize is that even though an explanation is in front of you, because the person, if it's outside the person's 
set of experiences. They're not going to understand. It doesn't matter how intelligent they are. They're not going to understand. You can sort of see that. You see that there's this wall that, where, the, where the doctor is speaking, but this person who's listening, it doesn't, doesn't register with them what is actually being said. And this is the problem is that both sides of the argument, both sides of the argument, I call them both conspiracy theorists, the vaxxers and the anti-vaxxers, are simply working from reports, studies that come out of a newspaper. Those aren't lab reports. Those, a lot of these, these, these studies are not proper lab reports. They are there for entertainment purposes. They're human interest stories, and they're nothing more than that. And while they're used by uh, the researchers, in some cases, these groups, uh, to raise money. That's their ad, you know. And, and they'll come up with a study and say, well, we found this in our study, and studies show this, and studies show that, and well, and scientists say this, and scientists say that, but not really, because if you sat down and read the lab report, which is in many cases very boring, uh, you wouldn't get through most of it. And the thing is, this is this is true for people ask me about you know flat Earth and uh, did man land on the moon, uh, and I go into and this is one of the discussions I had. I go into recently, I go into the details, the mechanism, the physics mechanism. Mecha- the mechanism of the physics of what was going on to show that the physics does indeed back up what we see. But they couldn't understand it. And the guy says, well, you know, I, I believe you, but he says, but you give me a headache. He says the details are too much. I can't handle them. And he says, it's going to take me a while to think about it. And this is the same thing with researchers. Uh, we don't come back with a, a an analysis uh, right off the bat on something we've read. We take a while. We, we look at over. We see that other, uh, other researchers are doing the same thing. We look at their lab reports. We, in other words, you find multiple sources talking about more or less the same thing. And that's saying more or less because sometimes there are slight differences. Uh, sometimes it was, you, you, articles will be sl- uh, in the same field, let's say protein chemistry, uh, but will end up with very similar results. And that way you can sort of see that hey, maybe there are two methodologies that work or three methodologies that work uh, that will produce uh, either similar or the same results. Typically, we say similar because there's always certain degrees of, of difference that makes one result somewhat unique from the other. In other words, they're not all exactly the same. They are similar, but they could be similar enough to be used as, as options for treatment. You know, this, this is how you would dose something. And this is the way a doctor would talk, and particularly if they're researchers, they would understand it. They would go through a, a, a sort of a diagnosis uh, t- type of rule that they learn in practice. This is why you have red- residency. You have your theory, but you need to practice it. Same thing with lawyers, and this is what Lionel should understand, is that there is different. there's a difference between theory and reality. There's a difference between rhetoric and reality. And most of liberalism today, well, even back, then, even when it began under Voltaire, was simply a work. They're, they were talking right. Why doesn't? Why, why isn't Castro a true communist? Because there is no true communist. Why aren't they true leftists? Why aren't they true socialists? Because there is no true anything. They're, they're, you t- you're, ta- you're, you're trying to compare the rhetoric to reality, and you can't do that. And the thing is, is if you studied enough, and, you, and then it's not going into religion at all, take the path of, of, of physics to Newton and Leibniz, take the path of calculus once again, you'll meet up with Newton and Leibniz, and you'll find that there's a Gnostic sense there, that this is Gnosticism. So that means you're going to have to put in a study into Gnosticism to fully understand what the background's about. You have to go into the background research to get the qualifying arguments that will sort of set in place what you're trying to see and what you're trying to understand. Without those points of reference, you're not going to understand what's going on because you don't have the background in this. And now this isn't something that's easy. This is something that's very complex because it takes years to do this. It's not a simple argument. It's not, you know, someone, well, I got this question here and, and they bring it up and it's a, it's a question that's basically philosophical. And they want a quick five-minute answer or even less than that, typically two minutes, and you can't give it to them. Well, so I say, them, well, here's the lectures here. But there's so many. And they go, well, but Daniel, there's so many of them. I said, yeah, 
this is your background now this is the background you need to understand what's going on if you don't do the background you're not going to develop the understanding that you need and of course most people won't do it they won't go go do the background because it is complex and they don't simply simply say oh, i don't have the time to do that and so and i said well that's that's where the answer is and it's that complex that if you don't do the background work you're not going to understand it's, this is what happens this is what limits lionel is that he doesn't have enough time let's say to go back to go do the background which will take a couple of years for, and so that he he actually stays within his orbit he stays within uh the orbit of of a contrarian so you leave he's yes he's an intellectual but he's also a contrarian so that's where he is but he doesn't he doesn't go outside the orbit enough to really leave that 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 place so that you know he was red, red pilled uh, when he started talking about uh, having uh, Trump run for office again, that was a red pill moment. That was a change in existential philosophy, a change in existential philosophy uh, to understanding what goes on with women in terms of legalization of prostitution. That was a red pill moment. But he hasn't been real red pilled enough. He hasn't moved enough outside of his orbit to really say that there is a, we call, and this is in terms of, of, of understanding quantum, fat, quantum physics, in terms of laser understanding how a laser works that you excite uh uh electrons into higher and higher orbits until you sort of free some of these electrons and this is in the differences between uh, uh the one one sort one level of energy and the other as you move back and forth you re- release the photons the photons are generated uh in the vibration of electrons that's what you see as a photon. This is what we see as light. This is well, this was brought forward by Einstein. It was also brought forward by Planck. So it was it was understood by these people who, who really uh, uh, weren't uh, they weren't atheists. They were Gnostic. They understood that there was something beyond. All right, I locked the exposure. That was a final way to lock the exposure and get a better shot of this. So we'll continue on. This is we've been talking about Gnostics now. Uh, particularly at Newton and Leibniz and uh, some of their understandings of how things actually work, that there was more beyond the physical environment. And this is why Voltaire and, and much of humanism, because Vol- humanism came out of Voltaire, were essentially a work. And this is this, this sort of can be illustrated by looking at and finding out who Hegel was and understanding that Hegel who was himself a Gnostic. And the Gnostics have this fundamental belief, belief in, in, in where they're coming from. And you'll have to sit down and do a history to understand this better. They understand the understood chess to be the Hegelian dialectic. And in other words, this is what progress, progressives define themselves by the Hegelian dialectic. And it's fundamentally that you need two sides of an argument to have a violent conflict. And the end result, the the the, the emergent from from the ashes of the old, right, the con from the conflict, I should say. The conflict is the old and the new. They fight it out in the synthesis uh, of that, that arises from the destroyed society, from the destroyed, from the destruction, from the ruins. Uh, and this is why Karl Marx talks about uh, communism being the having a violent revolution as a necessity. This is the Hegelian dialectic. This is this is what they were talking about. This is what progress is. This is this is what defines a progressive. And ironically enough, the London School of Economics is one of the places where this was key. This was understood. And the thing is, you have a number of people coming out and defining things. Like, like if you want to f- do a further analysis, you wonder why Lionel's talking about what he's talking about. Because there are two groups of socialists. There are two groups of humanists. There is the modern, which is based on Darwin. It's based on Marx. Well, these would be the two Marxists. They would talk about order and structure. Those are the modernists. This is where Lionel Braun sits in terms of his understanding of socialism. This is our the people who talk about it and say, oh, no, that's not, that's not what a socialist is. They're using the modernist definition. However, a postmodernist modernist definition, just like art, doesn't have to have any specific form. It could be whatever you want it to be. It's simply a concept because the entire world is a concept. It's nothing more than a hologram. And this is backed up by this whole sense of the holographic universe that is not real, it's, it's conceptual. This is backed up by Stephen Hawking's. 
And so what happens is you now have science being pulled from under the rug of the modern of the modernists, because the modernists sit on the on the on the throne of science. They say science is king, science is the ultimate truth. And we got a train coming by. Uh, the left wave guy is, is now activated, so I'm expecting a horn maybe in about 10, 20 minutes on the uh in the uh in the uh <clears throat> the right waveguide. And the thing is is that the atomic bomb, which was not mathematically predicted, was done by this is what Planck was doing too. He was an experimentalist. He didn't follow the rules of the modernists. He said, I'm gonna go outside the rules, I'm gonna experiment, I'm gonna test things out. He's gonna do exploration. Exploration is different from what we call standard uh, 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 science, but in that uh, exploration, you're going out because you don't know things. And you're testing things out to find out. You know, the experiment tells you where you're going to go next, and there is no there is no fundamental purpose for what you're doing initially. You're going to allow the experiment and the data, the observations, sort of to tell you where you're going to go next. And there are enough scientists still doing this today, but there are very few and far between, because it's more difficult. It's, it's not it, it, it's not easy, but it's easier to do the mathematics and come up with a theory than it is to actually sit there you know, night after night uh, until like two, three, four o'clock in the morning and do the observational work. Uh, people don't want to do that anymore. They want you know the uh, the, the parties. They want the sort of the, the uh, the staff parties, the faculty for parties, they want a number of the niceties that sort of went on in between that allowed them to sort of do, uh, the, you know, become, I am a scientist, I am a professor. Uh, you know, they, they were given this esteem, they wanted the esteem, and so it was more about prestige than it is about the research. When you sit down and do the research, you begin to realize that there is a difference between rhetoric and reality and this is what happens in, in in with the atomic bomb the atomic bomb because it was secret uh no one sort of really realized the atomic bomb was happening until they saw it in the papers even even the academics themselves didn't understand this uh and when they saw it, this was the end of mod, the, the modernist scientists this uh, modernism because the science had been defeated science and mathematics which was the ultimate truth couldn't predict the atomic bomb well, most of the computers that we have today, our cell phones, were not predicted by science, by mathematics. They were discovered, they were experimented on. You know, a lot of these experimentalists, this is why you have Apple having all these scientists. The same thing with, with, with Edison. Uh, he had not just, it wasn't just him, he was a whole building filled with scientists doing work on a lot of different things because they knew they couldn't predict it. They hide this. They hide this fact. Oh, here it is. You know, Tim Cook, the discoverer of the cell of the cell phone. Here it is. Steve Jobs, discoverer of the cell phone. You know, Apple computers. Here you go. Here you go. They, you know, but they know themselves that they were working in a larger community. That they picked things up from this what's called open source community. the The lie of the in, the, the individual scientist is a lie. It's a work. It's not reality. It's put out there for public consumption. So that you can sort of get the idea that there is something that is more significant there than than really than really that there is. Again, this is how you create the PR. This is how you create the sort of the the love of the product. And this is exactly what Edward Edward Bernays was talking about. He was taking taking the concept. That's what he did. He took a lot of uh, Freud's concepts of, of how the crowd behaved, the bewil the bewildered herd, the herding of animals. Treat and put this whole herding concept to human beings. This is how you control cows. You herd them. This is what you see on the walls on, on Wall Street. Why are people selling on buying based on oh the the buyers are, are, are selling because they believe this is going to happen or they're going to believe that? What is it? That, that, that's the stampeding of people. That is the control of the herd. What we see now in terms of, of <laughs> you know the vaccine again, it's crowd control. It is is the stampede. It's the herd, and if you, in some cases, depending on where you are in the herd, if you do not move with the herd, you're going to get run over. You're going to get trampled. That's what happens in in, in stadiums. You know, you know, uh, uh, people want to get out of a place that's burning very quickly. What happens? A stampede happens. 
And so people not only die from the fire, but they die because they get trampled in the stampede. And so this this, is, this d- does not come into our modern discussions. And this is what happens is that w- the modernists like Lionel will not understand the postmodernist who is also a socialist, they, but they're simply postmodernist humanism. And postmodernism human, humanism has no reality to it. Everything is a concept. And so anything goes, nothing matters because everything is a concept. And I think at this point in time, you cannot talk to them about morality because they have no morality. They've got to the point where they have no morality. So you can't bring this discussion up because they don't understand what it is. Just as you know, you, you, you talk to a conspiracy theorist and try to bring in the information, you know, that, that, that's coming out, you know, uh, about what the mechanism that is actually occurring in the thing they're talking about. When you try to bring out their, the, the mechanism, they have no clue what you're talking about. Just the way, you know, they have the scientists, the researchers who are doing the work in virology talking about this and that and the other thing. I won't go into the details, but it's, it's about all these different drugs that people are t- taking or want, want to take. It's not one drug or the other. There's a whole group of treatments. There's a whole group of options that work, and it depends on the doctor who, who, who is treating you, and it, because it depends on how the body reacts to various different things. So that what, one doctor who is treating CVD is not going to do the same treatment that another doctor is doing for the CVD. And they can't do it. There is no patent formula because everybody reacts to drugs and chemistry within the human body in different manners. So you can do a generalized uh, 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 called prescribed medicine, but you cannot make it specific. And the problem with the mandates is the mandates make this specific. Specific is the government coming out, coming in and telling the doctor what you can and can't do with your patient. And this is primarily from, from the doctor's point of view. Doctor's perspective, this is what they don't want to do. This the, the guy who was uh, was sort of uh, moved out as a conspiracy theorist. His patient patients are going to suffer because he can't treat his patients anymore, and his patients were surviving, which means that they're going to go to another doctor, following government orders, and these patients are going to die. And this, this is on record. There is a record of this. And he shows the record. He shows how that certain the care that they were giving, and, and this was other doctors doing the same care that he was, letting the doctors decide what to do next, saved the patient's life, moved it to the government situation where the government was sort of dictating the, uh, the, the, the narrative uh, on terms of patient care, and the patients were dying. And he got very upset about it. You could see at one point, he began crying, you know, saying, you know, realizing that, you know, dear old grandpa, I'm taking care of, he's going to come home with you. But with the government, you take dear old grandpa, and what's going to happen is he's not coming home anymore. You know he's going to die. And then this, 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 for a person, as a doctor, as, as a researcher, and you're out there to save people's lives, you understand what you're doing is saving people's lives and making people's lives better. Because you don't want to see people suffer. And realize what the government is doing, that they're making people suffer for a particular idea, an ideal. And this is, this is you go through the history of anything that has to do with humanism, socialism, com, you know, communism, nationalism. All these isms, you look to all these different governments, and their solution is, this is the same thing today, this is what's going on with the environment and the environmental thing, that people have to die. Their solution is always what Hitler's solution was. And then Hitler wasn't by himself. It wasn't a one-man show with Hitler. Hitler was the end result where the society felt that there was no problem with euthanizing people who were suffering. This was the argument. This was the, the selling point. I said the rhetoric is the selling point. The reality is something different. So what happens when you see BLM, you see all these different groups out there. You're seeing the reality, and you're also seeing the rhetoric at the same time, but the reality is not what the rhetoric is, but unfortunately, with the news, you're only be you're only being shown or sold the rhetoric. You're, you're, it's a selling point. And the thing is, is that you have to understand that the people who believe these things, even if you you don't, oh, there's no such thing as communist. These are not communists. Well, if a person says they're a communist, I'm going to believe them. Why? Because there are people out there who will say they're Napoleon or some other person, they're not, we know that they're not, but they have these mental disorders where they believe that they are certain people 
This includes transgender. You don't, you're, nothing you say is going to convince them otherwise. And so what you, you don't go and say, well, I know because I'm a so-and-so, and then you are not one of those things. It doesn't matter what you say. And it matters what the person feels. Is how the person feels that makes the difference, that makes the issue. And then typically when someone is upset, you have these, and they're coming to talk to you, you listen. That's all you do is you listen. The best doctor, the best therapy is when a person allows the patient, as a doctor, as a therapist, the best treatment is when you allow your patient to talk. And you're sitting there, you're simply listening. You're the listener. You 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 are the person. He is the, he in terms of the anthropomorphic sense, you know, covering both men and women. Uh, you allow the person to talk. That's the best therapy. And a lot of times, their issue is. They have no one to talk to. And so that talking, that conversation becomes the person's lifeline. This is what I've done with the soldiers who had PTSD. I'm a person, I'm, I'm up late. And in my previous forms, uh, in the early days of Cyborg Alpha, uh, when I was online in sort of these chat rooms, uh, I've met several uh, soldiers uh, who had PTSD and they were at the point of suicide, and they needed someone to talk to. And my job was there was was simply to be there to listen. That's all I did. I sat and listened, and the person think is a thing. You know, you just saved my life. And so, I said, I, 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 I said, okay, thank you very much. And he said, do you understand why I saved my life? I said, I have an idea, but you go ahead and you tell me. Let me know what you think, how you feel. He said, I needed somebody to talk to, and you were there. And that was it. That was. The extent of the therapy, this was the extent of talking the person off a cliff. This was the extent of talking the person out of uh, downing uh, X amount of pills that would, that would, would, would uh, sort of kill them. This is the, the talking point. This is the, 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 the entire depth of talking out, of, to, uh, of preventing a person from shooting themselves. This is how you prevent suicide. You talk to the person. And more often than not, it's the person doing the talking. You, you let the emotions come out. You give them a safe place for the emotion to come out. And you can't be judgmental in this. But unfortunately, this is what you see on TikTok, on on, on uh, uh, Instagram, on Twitter. It's all judgmental. It's all about me. And that's what Lionel talks about. The selfishness of society. Anyway, so that's it for this, uh, this uh, uh, observation vlog. Uh, we didn't hear the train horn at all. That means it must either further down the train horn occurred or that we didn't hear or uh, the train is now stopped at waiting for a clear, all clear signal because there's a, uh, it's a double track and at the end it becomes a single track uh, a couple, about maybe 20 miles down the track or, or, or about there. Uh, I, can't, I don't know what it is in kilometers, but I know 20 miles is further than 20 kilometers. Uh, it becomes a single track, and they have to wait for trains to sort of pass each other uh, in terms of the scheduling in order to uh, uh, prevent collisions on the single track. And so they wait here for the signals to change. So typically, if a train is stopped there now, all the signals are red in that particular direction. And until they get an all clear, they don't go anywhere. And they'll sit there for a couple, they'll sit there for a couple hours. Uh I think that's going to be it for now. Uh, we've gone over our time, and I will see you uh, probably tomorrow night for the next uh, observation vlog.